Hello everybody, and welcome to a special two-player edition of Relay Station. Uh, my name is Nakara, as you can see, with my little... There, there it is right there, see? Nakara. And uh, below me... Yes, that was below me. Uh, we have Shimmer. Uh, I, I'm... Arrow Bathory. Oh, there it is. Aces. Japan's a long way away. 
<laughs> All those bits getting stuck going across the ocean. All those shivery bits being attacked by <laughs> shivery sharks. Shivery bits. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for Relay Station. Um, David uh, was attacked by a crowd of wild Canadian geese. So, sorry, Canada geese. My bad. And uh, has to have all his fingers reattached. So, pretty bad. Couldn't type. Um, Couldn't pick his nose either. <laughs> or that. <laughs> And uh, as everybody uh, is aware, Jake has been um, kidnapped by Cloud Imperium Games. So, it's a problem. Um, hope you all enjoy our uh, our chat today. Uh, we will need questions because, well, it's only two-player mode today. So, uh, I will... Actually, is the bot working? Can you check? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Hey, the bot works! Oh. Woo! Excellent. Ask lots of questions. We want at least 14 questions from everybody watching. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think we should jump right into show and tell for this week. All right. There we go. And uh, so this was uh, an interesting episode. Actually, a lot of it, you know. Continuing the trend of good episodes that have been going on for quite a while now. Push and pull. What do you think about push and pull, Shiver? There's got to be a pun in there. Come on. Um... <laughs> I thought you'd have many. <sighs> I'm just going to be serious, unfortunately. I like set. Uh, I know, I do. I do like it. I, as I was saying to you before the show started, I don't know if it's an animation or the physics box grid thing going on there, but the way that when you attach yourself to an item and push it around, it looks very natural, unlike other games that have done it before, where it just you become this solid you, object and it, be, it just feels unnatural. You become part of the trolley and you're like propelling it along, but it's attached to your body. Like, yeah, hmm. I know, I know. It, it's weird. All right, so it looks like this, I, I totally forgot about this, but this main section, even though they, they do have the push and pull banner at the top, it's actually about mounted guns. So, um, what do you think about these mounted guns? Do they look better than the uh, the one that we had previously? Do you like the way that the animations are? Again, it's the same thing. It, it just looks more natural. I really do like it a lot more. It's It still looks like it's got a lot of oomph to it. It does. It and oh man, there's a clip later where they have a they're like pushing around a guy in a trolley with a mounted gun on it. And <laughs> it looks like that would be a rather fun shenanigans going on. I wonder whether or not because of the way that they've set it up now, we'll have either in a wreck or something like that, the gun will still possibly be functional so we can rip it off and just use it Arnold Schwarzenegger style in the jungle. You better be able to rip rip them off. I mean, if that's bleeds, sort of we can kill it. That's just sort of a part of gaming now, right? All right. So, I'm trying to remember why there are so many mixed up clips. Maybe they're just introducing all the topics for the. I watched this episode like an hour ago and I'm like why are thing why are the clips so mixed up but yeah they did a really good job making the running with the trolley thing actually look good it looks really good I haven't mm. they had so many problems for years with movement animations of their characters and this looks great <laughs> it does and it it it's all that and it's we've ha heard it now from a CIG employee hello Jake it's not the first iteration not in this iteration sorry but I like how natural everything looks on this. It, it makes it feel, you know, proper, properly implemented, I suppose. You crash into something. The boxes fall off, not into a preset animation, but according to the amount of force used and where and when. It responds to bumps and things like that as you're running along. 
It's not this weird static object where it hits a bump, your character's suddenly running in midair or something like that. It all <laughs> looks really nice. It all looks a lot more natural. Said from a gamer who's experienced these things before, I'm sure. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that happening. <laughs> oh, man. Or you start to clip through things and like judder around, which I'm sure is going to happen with these trolleys, but... Um... I mean, they haven't got the full realism yet because if you've ever pushed a real trolley which i'm sure we all have there's always that one that's got the wheel that's just possessed and it veers off to one side and you're constantly fighting it yes yeah make sure you make that suggestion jake you, you, you gotta disable one wheel of the trolley at all times in some fashion <clears throat> then people will pay a fortune to have their trolley fixed properly <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to have one crappy wheel. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I was really impressed by the little subtle physics with the mounted gun. How, um, as they said, your camera's not, like, locked. You, you, your character moves his hands. And there's a little bit of lag there. And uh, you can actually sort of feel or see the weight of the gun. Pretty neat. It feels more natural, doesn't it? I mean feels more natural you can see it you if you can immerse yourself in this video and you know actually with that perspective you can see yeah that that's going to feel more natural to you as a player when you get to use it mm -hmm. what other types of uh, guns do you think should should be allowed on mounts like what are you thinking here do, like are we talking rocket launchers basically yeah any anything that would be considered a heavy weapon like mm -hmm. an RPG, a massive, a massive mini gun, a, a mini gun. There's got to be some la like laser like chain guns gun. too, right? Mm. Yeah, I would hope so. But th things that normally I think would be delegated to a heavy armor personnel type carrier should be able to be put on a mounted gun. Hey, Sargareth. Hey, Philostan. Hello, everybody. Um, the a clip where... trolley at work. That has two broken wheels. Don't take it out in the rain, then, for Lost and it will just disintegrate. I am really impressed Paper's by this. It's not usually used to make trolleys. I'm really impressed by this running stride that the character has. Like it looks so good. Although the problem with that, I mean, it's a great running stride and everything. But the problem with that, if you did that in real life with a trolley, is that inevitably your wheel would hit a rock that's like the size of the head of a pin. And you would, like, go flying over the handlebars. <laughs> that bit with the um, tractor beam. I was going to call it the gravity gun. It's a gravity gun. With it's the tractor a gravity beam. gun, yeah. And the box is just put on the trolley and it knocks off, knocks the trolley and you just know, oh, fuck, that's going to be me, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be all of us. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> now I have a question because I've I've been wondering this. So they showed they showed um the character pushing the set of stairs, obviously to um it's basically like an for basically like an airplane, right? Where you the stairs get pushed <clears throat> up to the door and you can walk out of the airplane. Um, do you like that? Do you think that's a that would be a good kind of detail for this game for like public transports and stuff? Or are you just like, that's Sadly, fucking like annoying? It, yeah. <laughs> yes. I like it, but it's fucking annoying, isn't it? I can't see it. I would hope it's not going to be used all the time. Because, I mean, like, the yeah. Gladius has got the ladder that extends out. The Origin 300 series has got a ladder that extends out. But, yeah, I, I could see there being situations, certainly in Squadron anyway, where maybe you're on an elevated panel because you need to get underneath the ship to work on it or something like that, mm -hmm. but you also need someone to get into it to test it. So hopefully it's not going to be something that is constantly needed because that yeah. is going to get annoying. Um, any more thoughts about this clip? Nothing that we haven't already discussed. You know, dust kicks up when you hit the ground. It's a lovely effect. You know what I love? In the background there, you can see the giant claw. Mm. Uh, I, I insist that I be allowed to use that. 
Yes. There needs to be a player interactable giant claw crane where you can pick up enemies and throw them with your crane. Please. Yes. Either that or uh, turn it into a giant claw game where you have uh, enormous stuffed animals. Um, and can never get any of them. <laughs> 25 credits to use each time. That's right. Pretty soon you have no credits. <laughs> Oh man. Docking. But, um, oh, is that part of the docking? Was it? Well, might be a bit before. Whether you had the guy in the heavy armor and he was looked like he was wading his way through molasses as he was walking along. Oh yeah, yeah, that was actually a previous clip. Yeah. So that was um that was part of the staggers. We should actually talk about that for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's mm. do that. Um, so the staggers, they looked, um, they actually look, I don't know, to me, really, really good. Um, I, I think it's going to be hilarious trying to walk through a ship as your uh, pilot's making all sorts of maneuvers and you're just like, oh man, <laughs> let's try to stay off the ground. It adds that effect that, you know, you're in some serious shit. Because you're fighting against these forces, and it's going to feel like you are actually fighting to move, which is it just adds that something, you know. Um, there are FPS uh, games out there where you you very much feel like you're just a floating camera with a pop gun. You feel very <laughs> unattached from the character, unattached yeah. from the game. And then there are other games. I think Touch Wood played all of them. But Battle, the Battlefield series was really good at making it feel like, you know, you've, you've got this gun and you can feel the recoil on it when you're using it. it. It brought you in like that. And those bits like that where you're fighting against the environment to move, to do stuff, it makes you feel like you, you can feel it almost. I, mm -hmm. I, maybe that's just, that could just be me. No, for sure. Absolutely. That's, that goes, and it totally ties into the whole immersion thing for Star Citizen pretty strongly and of course when you're being shot at by a fucking minigun you don't want to feel like you can just breeze through it. you for uh -huh. everyone involved it should feel like you know you are fighting against a hailstorm yeah of here bullets. we go these are this is the stagger portion here um and yeah they basically what they were saying is that they they wanted to have something between like not reacting at all and falling on your ass they wanted to have like a like minor reactions to getting shot to having the ship move to running the ship running into things um and uh it looks really good to be frank mm. Mm. can i still be shiver frank yes okay you just can't be you just can't be uh rick remember that's true. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, some things will still knock you around. I should bloody well hope so too. Oh, for sure. Some things will. They just wanted to have some have an animation that was something between not reacting at all to the physical, you know, change mm -hmm. and uh yeah. and falling on your ass all the time, which is annoying I mean, as hell. It, it, it could certainly most certainly could be used as a tactic you've got a shotgun say a shotgun has got a lot of push power on it so that's going to be what you want to use on your front lines when you're being boarded because you want to try and push them back a little bit mm -hmm. or vaporize them in one shot i suppose but just keep them off balance a little bit too it makes it harder for them <clears> to, <throat> to accurately kill you <laughs> oh man I love that they put so much so much work and thought into all these different trolleys. <laughs> How many different ones can we make? Oh. I mean, they could it, they could have done um, another alternative, which I'm now that I've thought about it, would be quite cool to see. Of on capital class ships where you can land, ships have these designated spots for certain classes of ships. You know, like you would expect. Um, I want to say the Tiger's Claw, Bengal class, to have <laughs> designated spots for individual types of ships. Like Gladius goes in this particular bit here, and it would be cool if the ladder actually extended out 
of the um, flight deck. That would be really That'd cool. That would be all cool in sci-fi. That'd be very sci-fi. Got to cut down the weight on your fighter craft, so we're going to put the ladder in the, in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in the middle of a firefight, you don't want these people running around with a fucking ladder getting in the way of your combat pilots, so you've used some logic there. I just want to see ladders appearing out of the floor, to be honest with you. I, I want that to happen. <laughs> oh, All right. Next one up. We have docking. Uh, this well, feature... You have to buy me dinner first. This feature is moving along quite quickly. Um, I mean, after not moving along at all for many years. But it's moving along quite quickly now. Um, and... Uh, it's um it looks great frankly i like that they have all the the advertisements when you're walking out on the docking thing because that's it just totally brings up the thought of like walking through the the uh um uh from the terminal out to the to an airplane when you're boarding skywalk sure i think they call them different things everywhere <laughs> corrugated death tube yes <laughs> um any thoughts about these um well they haven't they still haven't shown and answered my one question of where can i stand when it's extending out where they let you but where are they gonna let me is the question so it looks like from this clip that you will be able to at least watch it extend out, but I don't know. I think you might have to stand here in this like little airlock area while it extends. But I'm really lazy. I want to stand on the end of it as it extends out and just have it move me. <laughs> oh, man. You'd, you'd, you'd be running thing, such man, a high man. risk of dying for some ridiculous reason. Than <laughs> holding W for two seconds. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I, I like I like it. Yeah, I like the advertisements. Like you say, it's it does remind you of actually getting on and off an airport airplane. Yeah, and and also all the skylights and everything, uh, being able to look out at all the other ships in the station and everything that you're you're around. It's uh, it's pretty nice. Artists do a great job as always. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I was really, really so last what last week we got to see like the hey, ability. Last week we got to see the ability to like um, um, auto and manually dock with a station. I was so impressed that they were able to get manual docking to work um, with like giant ships and stations because I was very I, for a long time I was pretty convinced they were just going to have auto docking for for those docking ports, but. Um, yeah, pretty amazing. And yeah, Jake, the docking UI is fantastic. The and they they just they solve that problem in such a beautiful way of just putting a camera at the docking port. And that is how you move your ship. It's great. Copstar's right, by the way, as well. We won't be allowed on the moving space. He's right. He's right. He's sadly right. Um Elwook <laughs> says no extra victim victims or guests tonight. No, um, we just David talked to us this morning. And said that he wasn't gonna be able to make the show. Um, I just decided that, to go with the two of us. We're probably gonna work on getting some more guests on soon. We our first few shows of the year were mostly about the roadmap. So, but um, which was a whole lot of talking. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna start looking towards getting some guests on here for the next. Uh, next uh, several weeks and uh we'll go from there <laughs> we're all the victims thanks jake all right so um any more thoughts about docking oh that was a i mean yes. i know you i know you have I lots wonder. of thoughts about docking but specifically this clip <laughs> you promised you wouldn't tell I wonder whether or not the docking thing is very similar tech to what they're going to be using with the Hull E. And is it the Hull D's got 
the telescopic effect as well? I think uh, Hull C does as well. Hull C, D, and E are just different sizes of the same ship, basically. <clears throat> I, wonder, I wonder if this is all knock-on effects from having that tech in and working. I highly suspect that they are at least very closely related, if not, you know, two sides of the same coin, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's... Uh... <clears throat> that was my impression too when they were able to get this in so quick is that they probably will be able to get the hull series in fairly quickly but it, they do haul an enormous amount of cargo so you have to kind of make sure that the game is ready for a ship like that um they are just it's like a total it's like I'll another seeing above thank you it's another um order of magnitude above the cargo ships we currently have <laughs> <laughs> They're a Just lot, a, a lot more intense cargo ships than uh, than the internal cargo that most of the ones uh, we have right now haul. And I can't help but wonder what other kind of knock-on effects this could have, because you know, you know that they've got some of their elves in the background thinking hard on this about. So, what if we had a ship that wasn't cargo ship, but it could do? you know, extend out certain bits of it, put it in a war mode or something like that. Maybe, hmm. um... Not the Redeemer, the big giant space cannon. I want to say Redemption, but it's not the Redemption. Oh, the, um... Oh, wow, my the brain is... the damn shit, but I can't remember the name of it. Retribution. Thank you. The retribution. That could be quite a cool dramatic effect because this is a flying space death cannon. It you know, it, it just it flies along and it's this flat thing and then it goes into firing mode and all these bits come out of it and start deploying and then you look at it and you think, Oh, that's a ginormous fucking gun. <laughs> Yeah, that that's an interesting thought. Um, I I'm good. I'm kind of curious about when they actually get those ships in the game, whether or not they're gonna want any make any to make any more of them. Um, I don't. I'm very curious to see what kind of performance hit they're gonna take from having a ship that articulates like that, um, and how bad the performance is when you are actually doing the articulation of all the bits. Um, if it if they can Ryan? make it work so that it's not brutal on performance, then I could see them using it more. What about if they have this planet-sized entity, right? It could have, <laughs> like, two sort of horns at the front so it eats other planets, but then it's a shocker that it turns into this ginormous robot. Okay. We could call it Unicron. Oh. We could. We could do that, Shiver. Can we do that? Sure. Why aren't we doing that? Just call up Turbulence. Just throw this whole Star Citizen crap out the way. I want a Transformers game now. Just call up Turbulence. Barry 18 was just a giant robot also. Yes! Yes! Of course. Jake gets um, me. Man. God, I miss you, Jake. I'm just not good enough for you, Haim. <laughs> it's all about you. So, what do you think about Metro the uh, flex? What about what do you think about the healing giant jelly beans? It was all it was it was tacked on at the end, then I was like, oh, this is different. But they are huge giant jelly beans, aren't they? You're right. Mm -hmm. basically just, yeah, I suppose I mean, it's just showing off the harvestables. Yep. It's another one. So these ones are supposed to heal you, apparently, in some fashion. I'm guessing that they'll probably be some kind of ingredient in a larger craftable system. Um, but yeah. Um, what do you think about the artwork for this? The artwork's really nice, actually. It's very detailed and it looks all shiny and glossy and 
just the way that they've done the texture gives it this three-dimensional effect. You can look at it and you think to yourself, this this feels a bit squishy. Yeah. This is not how I should be saying this this feels squishy. But <laughs> anyway. feels gelatinous. It does. It, it it looks like it has subsurface detail, which uh, which makes it look, <clears throat> you know, like it's got you know some sort of. What am I trying to say here? Yeah, it, like it's got sort of a squishy exterior and um, and kind of uh, a sh- like um, membrane around it. If you know what I mean, <clears throat> you're sort of seeing the inside <clears throat> of it through the clear membrane. <clears throat> um. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's I'm curious. I'm I'm so curious about what all these things are going to be for, and why like something like this is like one of the first harvestables. <laughs> well, I suppose I'm going to hate myself for doing this comparison, but think of it as like alchemy in um an Elder Scrolls game. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, specifically four onwards. You you start with the base materials. The basic ingredients a mushroom for a healing potion you can just eat the mushroom and get two percent health Ooh. but then the next tier will be combining these ingredients and then you've got your end game so to speak potion mm-hmm. health hypo spray type thing that you've made from the rest of the ingredients you've got to you know you, you start from the bottom and work your way up Or you started from Perhaps. the bottom and now we're here? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Jake, you can tell them that I approve of the giant jelly beans. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I could see it being... Uh, a career might be a strong word for it. A hobby being in-game effectively alchemists you just go hang around on planets learn how to use those ingredients and see what you can make from them i think it's probably going to tie into the farming system which will tie into a larger like what can you do with food system um considering they're going so far as to have as as uh david always references individual bites coming off your plate and reducing the amount of food on your plate yeah Uh, i'm sure they'll have some crazy food system so they're literally sending bytes of information to the servers. Oh, no. Yes. Um, so this was highlighting some of the improvements they've made to existing uh, worlds on Stanton recently uh, and for the upcoming uh, patches. Also, we have uh, corals and things growing on rocks, all sorts of interesting stuff going on here. They have starfish. It's important. Yes. <laughs> Are you okay over there? I'm leaving that one. I'm leaving that one. Oh my. Um but the, the detailing on this is wonderful, isn't it? It is. And you can see they're getting closer and closer all the time to real clouds. They're working on it. Some of those steam vent cloud things look pretty good. Um, Soon we'll look up in the sky and go, hey, that one looks like a cloud. (laughs) Exactly. Their problem, and honestly, CIG's problem with clouds here is in in Star Citizen is that you have to be able to fly through them. And they have to look good Mm. all the way from, like, orbit to you flying through them to you being on the planet. And... And so you have to be able to see them from all sides. You have to get really close to them, and, and they have to look good. They have to stay the same. You can't look at a cloud from orbit and then fly up to it, and it's totally different. <laughs> you know, so. But if you fly through the, if you fly through the cloud, that was difficult to say. Then, based on what we learned last week, it's gonna your vision's gonna be fucked up because you haven't got any windscreen wipers. Yeah, I know. All right, right. Hey, Jake, that's our biggest concern now about Star Citizen is a lack of windscreen wipers. Um, <laughs> I mean, you might have starfish in your windshield. What are you going to do then? A shiver approval meter. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all right, Shiver. How would we really how would we design how would we design a Shiver approval meter? Really low bar to start with. <laughs> So it always starts at the bottom and it sort of creeps up? Is that what you're saying? No, it just starts at the bottom and that's it. It never moves. <laughs> never moves. <laughs> you're going to need James Cameron to come in to raise that bar. <laughs> no comment. But as as for these rocks, are these... The, way, the, the, the dimensions to them, they actually look three-dimensional you know you've got the detail on there is that a texture work or is this some tessellation at play here i have no i'm blown away by this i don't know is that geometry mm. if it's geometry it's expensive but if it's not geometry yeah. how are they hiding it so well that's amazing some tech texture work is becoming really incredible though it's now, so yes um but yeah like i don't know the, the artists are incredible. Their rocks have been getting so much better over the past, like, say, like, nine months or so. Um, and to see this type of stuff where you have, like, things growing on the rocks is just amazing. But you Imagine how they must feel. It's like, rocks. I'm so fucking done with rocks. Rocks. It's always fucking rocks the past year. It's just rocks. Rocks and stone and pebbles, boulders. Yep. <sighs> And like some of the rocks are even porous, so you have to you have to figure out how to do those the the holes in the rock properly so that they actually look good. That's not easy. Yeah. All right. Could stay stare at procedural planets all day. Let's continue on here. <laughs> Ah, uh, our colonialism buildings, our outposts, or not outposts, homesteads, sorry. They got the Tesla battery pack there, and the Tesla solar panel. <laughs> Where's my Tesla coil? That's coming in a future patch. Man, is that going to be the red alert patch? <laughs> yes. Nice command and conquer. Some of these buildings nice do look like conquer. they're C and C. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's been really cool to watch this this feature evolve. Um, it's funny because they originally were like, they were they were showing it to us, and they're like, we don't even know if we're actually going to do this. We don't know if we're going to use any of these designs. We're not sure what we're gonna do here, and then they're then like a couple weeks later, they're like yeah, we're doing this, and off we went. <laughs> Are we gonna? Where's the um, no straight edge bit coming Ooh, up? I think that's lovely. This blew my freaking mind. The concrete degradation. There it is. Oh my god! It looks so good, shiver. <clears throat> It really does. Now, how that's got to be a texture, but man, I want to see that up close. I want to see how good it looks, because it's clever, isn't it? It's yeah. really clever. So much of this stuff looks amazing, and I know that there's no geometry involved because that's too hard. Well, I mean, concrete is pretty hard. <laughs> Thanks, Shiver. Appreciate that. Just just wanted to cement down on your point. And you know, the little the little grooves around the corners and stuff and having rounded corners, that was that's kind of interesting, but that's not what blew my mind. It was the degraded and broken concrete with the like rust and stuff and what the hell? Mm. How did they do that? I mean I know I've seen games do it, but they're like finished games that have you know, spend an enormous amount of time handcrafting things, and I'm just like, this is it's pretty amazing. I mean, is this going to be part of the wear and tear system, do you think? Or is it just going to be, <laughs> this has been here for X amount of time, this is what it looks like, this one's new and it doesn't look like that? I mean, given that it is what it is, a Chris Roberts game, and 
they're they seem to be leaning pretty heavily into the wear and tear system i think they probably will make it a phase of the wear and tear of a structure that's my guess it might turn any of these things are a lot a lot of these things are aspirational right you want to do this mm. but really in the end what everything is going to come down to when they're actually trying to release our citizen is what's the performance like and where what do they have to do to make it not garbage you know um, very true because if having constantly evolving you know like textures on buildings is too too difficult then they might not be able to do it um yeah but they you know but it's, that, it's just yeah, a lovely effect isn't it and it's so if nice. it is going to be part of the wear and tear system it's got so many possible implications you know you, you're on a planet that suffers from really bad dust storms and you had this pristine bunker but this particularly bad dust storm rolled in and ship was smashing its wall and you actually have to go out and visually inspect any kind of damage and things like that no i like that i, I like the idea that i log into star citizen in my habitation area but i'm i'm i could risk going out into this dust storm or i could stay in in the dust storm and experience this fucking um what was that riddick movie where they're stuck in but they're under attack by birds but oh uh pitch, is that black? pitch black yeah yeah i want I, I would like to experience that kind of thing if i so choose to the problem there is because it's a game you can't force that on a player there has to be the possibility that if they don't want to do that today but they still want to play the game they can somehow get out of it <laughs> have an incoming incoming storm warning mm. or what if they log in and the storms you know at its very peak you can't that therein lies the problem of well how do we portray this fucking dangerous storm but really at the end of the day you could just go out i don't know that's gonna be up to them they might make it so it so you are taking your life in your hands going outside i mean some games you die you know that's just how yeah, it yeah. Uh, i'm i'm good with that kind of a compromise of yeah okay it's it is literally a deadly storm out there and if you go out there you could get off the planet or you could just get your face smashed in by a particularly large rock I mean, but it does have, you know, your, 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 you have a garage there, so you have a vehicle, you know, you have the chance of driving out of the storm. Certainly. Yeah. Um, I do like the idea of having these, these, um, life support systems, power, uh, battery backups. And I, I think it should be fairly, I wouldn't say trivial, but easy for them to replicate something like, um, like an outpost or a space station or a ship's power, like like um, component system, and just have the same thing work in the in the habitation. So you need to have make sure that your power is working and so on and so forth. Um, a lot I mean, of bunch he, of gameplay. He, so. Yeah, exactly. Even that could be. I I when I think of it in my head, it sounds quite appealing. You're you're trapped in this dust storm and. The main power's gone offline. Well, someone's got to go out there and find out what happened, traverse the storm, fix it under the pressure mm -hmm. of this storm, and then get the fuck back in. So that could be some fun gameplay right there. There's a lot of games where that is that is a good portion of the gameplay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> For sure. Apparently, we're about to get to the best part. And. Um, Mirroring what Jake said the other day on Unnamed Game Show, I fucking hate survival games because the core of us, most survival games are you need to eat 10 seconds later. Why aren't you fucking eating yet? Why aren't you fucking eating yet? Why haven't you had a drink yet? But th this is the kind of survival I would be interested in where you are literally fighting for your survival where it's, it's, it's an interesting game mechanic, not just eat, eat. Eat, you fucking anorexic shit. <laughs> Eat again. Yeah. Uh, skylights. You know, a true you... player versus environment. What do you think of all these skylights? They look nice. Mm. Oh, 
Also, I love that they have all the NPCs just like floating in the air and like contorted into horrible positions in that shot. Like, oh, they're having issues with the NPCs again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, man. I love that they had the detail of the trees actually like reaching up towards the skylight where they're like, they're like, screw this, I'm growing up here. <laughs> oh. I mean, it, it's it's really hard to obviously fully judge an area based on the white box because yeah, where's well, detail, but you you get a nice impression of it. You can see where they're going with it, and it just makes you think this is going to look fucking amazing when they have put in all the work on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's funny that the characters in white box like. What's going on there? <laughs> oh, Maybe they're in the tree bore soft mint world or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they should just have some alternate dimensions in Star Citizen that are just all the white boxes. That'd be great. All right. So, first work out of Turbulent. Um, they were as a as an art test. They were creating a new javelin derelict. And this is, uh, you actually notice with the giant crane and the claw hand there, this is where the all the uh, <laughs> mounted gun tests were taking place as well. This looks so good. Looks like an actual base in a finished game and you're like wandering around, you know, getting missions and chatting with all these people. And it gives you an idea of that javelin. It's huge. Also, where's the soundworm? We're waiting. There's far too many people here that need to be eaten by the soundworm. I could also eat that Avenger, to be frank. Is that really the Avenger's name, Frank? Yes. I'm really excited to have uh to have Turbulent working on environments so much. Um they really needed to have a dedicated environment team on top of their other environmental people, so it's uh and I don't know, this crash site looks really good to me, so I think they know what they're doing. Shiver, would you like to see this in the game? Because they're, they're, this was a test, so they're not sure if this is going to end up in the game. But Certainly. If not this and something like this. I mean, I could easily see players not salvaging a huge cap ship wreck like this. Or even maybe that becomes what salvage is. for You, you temporarily make a camp around the wreckage and day in, day out. you got to have your giant claw crane. Would be a huge... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be a huge project, wouldn't it, to salvage a Javelin, an Idris, that you couldn't just do in one game sitting. So... Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think about this, Jake? I'm curious. Because I think you like it. <laughs> Tell you what, though, that Javelin's not going to fly again. No. I don't think uh, I don't think Humpty Dumpty can be put back together. Uh, <laughs> that won't buff out. No, that'd be a really annoying project. Here's a javelin in a million pieces. Put it back together. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like periodically drop right? wrecks for the community to strip. Yeah, my thing that I really want them to do, but I I know it's going to be somewhat difficult. But I I want I want when a player crashes a ship, there should be a wreck there. That's what I would like it to be. I would like, if you crash your javelin into a planet, there should be a javelin wreck there. That's what i feel it should be but i know that might be difficult would... in in, a, in an online game i don't know i mean 
the way that they're setting it up, is it? Is it really going to be that difficult? Because I don't know. It's still an entity entity that was in the game world before, just crashes into um, planet. We've already seen them experimenting with uh, planet deformation. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily outside the realms of... But, but like you said earlier, it all comes down to performance. If it's going to completely wreck a planet, you know, if, if someone's on the other side of a planet and Javelin comes crashing down and they don't even see it, and it wrecks their performance, and yeah, that's not going to happen, but it would be a fantastic idea. It would be... Yeah. I mean, I, I think know it would the be... smaller wrecks are going to despawn, aren't they? You'd think... I'm I'm very curious how they're going to do that and how they're going to tie him with uh, with um, uh, reclaiming the uh, salvage. That's what I was. I was only thinking about the reclaimer. I'm like, yeah. Um, I do really like too. They're kind of showing off some of their. Uh, you, know, you get to use some of the other art assets from the javelin. You get the just the, the like ribs of the ship. Um, it's pretty neat. So All right. They have made the ships in this way mm-hmm. so that the only time you're ever going to really see it is if this ever happened. But then, you know, I'd be alright if they just did place static wrecks that you could salvage or have giant planet ship graveyards. I was wondering that too, if they should maybe just like, okay, a player crashed here in a, in a javelin and they just, um, when nobody's around, they swap it out for one of these pre-built rex right there still is a derelict site there it's just you know not the mm. exact thing that happened you know i'm i'm curious about how that would all work um so let's go see if we have any queries yet no two. Oh, we do uh ask more questions please and for a moment i do want to mention because this is something we talked about a lot last year Figured I should talk about it a little bit again now. Um, funding. So, funding is a little bit behind um, where it was last year when they made almost $80 million. Um, but it is still far ahead of any previous year. Um, and at least from what I can see here, it looks like February uh, 2021 actually made more money than February 2020. So... It's uh, still going strong. I would, uh, I mean, very, very early, but I would still expect them to make at least $60 million this year, which is a lot more than they had made previously. So very, very strong funding still for Star Citizen, which is awesome. We just haven't talked about that much recently. Um, Elwick asks, how many ships do I need to buy to gain Chris's approval? What do you think, Shiver? How should we 42. answer Oh, well, of course course 42 yeah and you know what would be nice 69 69. (laughs) yes i knew it would be nice oh my Uh, so one and only the starter ship only ever if you ever want to buy anything more than that just do it because you want to support the development and things like that. But if you want to buy in now and wait God knows how long until this game is released and experience what is being made now, just the starter ship. If mm-hmm. you, that, that's, yeah. Don't need to buy that either. You can, if you want to just sit there, wait, and watch on the sidelines to see what happens and how the project develops, just wait. Just wait. Um, I completely agree with that. Spend your um, money. Especially, you can already... Go ahead. You should spend your money subscribing to Nakara's OnlyFans. Really? Why not yours? Mine works in reverse. <laughs> I just pay- post constant nudes until people pay me to stop. <laughs> Oh no. Um 
It's not working out well. <laughs> so, Alec asks, <laughs> how... <laughs> How long until oh, Turbulent is cranking out environments? Do you anticipate this freeing up the mission team or which teams? Um, so, do you mind if I take this one? By all means. Um, how long? Well, they seem to do pretty good on their art test there. Uh, I would say they're probably going to be fully spin up probably within about another two to three months. Um... I don't anticipate freeing up any teams because I think what they're hoping to do with Turbulent is make more content faster, not even free up any existing teams from what they're doing. Um, so it'll just be more things I think you'll see. And probably there's, there's a pretty significant tail on this, I think, in terms of like when you'll actually be playing content made by turbulent um but i would say probably within a year or so we'll probably start actually being in environments that they made um and uh yeah and then they'll well, you'll probably just see far more location content than previously that's my guess anyway um any thoughts more about questions. that Shimmer? I think you're, you know, when it comes to this sort of thing, you're usually really good and correct about these things. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess we'll see whether or not I'm on the right page or not. <laughs> um, Elwick asks a great question and something I totally, I, I remembered earlier to talk about it and then forgot. Um, but this is a topic we can talk about for quite a while. Uh, he says, I was late, but how is Calling All Devs? Um, calling All Devs was great this week uh it was basically jared uh talking like once or twice and the rest of it was richard tyra explaining the <laughs> the entirety of the way that they're approaching inventory um and i thought it was quite good uh they are talking about um basically they were explaining why they're not going directly to physical physicalized inventory um which is the end goal mostly the feeling I got is basically that they, it was going to take too long to get, to go from, if you're just going to go directly from what we have now to that, first of all, that is difficult because you don't get to test anything along the way. But and secondly, it would probably be quite a while because a truly 100% physical inventory is something most games don't even attempt because it's very hard. <laughs> and, uh, and will take a lot of work. Um, it's very hard work and the payout just isn't worth it in the long run for most of these games. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but it, it, with the way that Star Citizen does it with physicalized models, physicalized items, there is a payout for it. You could shoot a grenade off someone's belt, whereas Battlefield, you don't even see where the grenades are. You don't want to know where they keep their grenades. No. 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 They're in the boots. Deforms their feet really badly. It's quite gross, actually. War. War never changes. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> basically, what I got from what Richard Tyra said, um, he, he is one of those who, he, um, Kind of like uh, Tony Zervek, there's a lot of information there and when, <laughs> in a few minutes of him talking. Um, and uh, basically what I got from what he was saying is that their next step is that they want to... A couple things that they want to do. They are trying to get rid of the, uh, what, the PMA, which is I think is what the personal management app or something in the MobiGlass. Because, uh, as he says, it doesn't make any sense that you are managing what's on your body using an app <laughs> in, uh, in a Moby Glass. Um, so that will be moving to the uh, personal inner thought system slash the, um, the new inventory screen. So kind of a combination of those two. Um, and then they're also hoping to introduce things like uh, um, a... A ship inventory, um, a 
personal inventory, so like what's on your body, as well as a local inventory, which will be when you are at a landing zone. That will be what you what you have there. Or it could be things like if you're in your hangar, there's a local inventory for what you have at the hangar. And uh, you'll be able to move things around back and forth in between those inventories. Um, any thoughts about what he was talking about? Does it sound like a good system to you, Shiver? It does. It sounds really interesting. I love the fact. I I love the fact that they're trying it out, not just trying it out, but they've got a good solid idea of what they want. Hopefully, how they're going to get it, and what the end result is going to be. As long as they've got, you know, this is how we start. This is what we're aiming for. They'll find a way to do it. And the fact that this guy's got about as much passion for inventory as Tony Zurovec has for Quanta, brilliant, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I was I was quite happy with this episode. It's always uh, cool to hear him talk about it. Um, and, I mean, physical inventory has a potential to really set apart Star Citizen from a lot of other things. Not not just talking about, you know, managing, you know, 50 stuffed animals in your, uh, in your um, hangar, but also, honestly, I, I often think... When I think about physicalized inventory, I often also think about um, the way that they're developing the ship components because they're they're intrinsically tied in that they are going for this level of detail that is a little just sort of above what what most uh, most games attempt. Um, where you know you can open up a shield generator and you can see the parts inside of it and you can replace a piece of a shield generator and make it work again. You know, that type of thing. Um, that is... Uh, and similarly, eventually with physicalized inventory, you'll be able to open up a box and see what's in the box. And the stuff will actually be there. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go take a look at the roadmap here and get some idea of when we're actually expecting these things. Or Jake can tell me, but... He might not be listening to me anymore. It's very possible. Um, I'm curious, anybody in chat, do you have any thoughts about the inventory system, about uh, about calling all devs? Um, this is a good 20-minute episode. Release view. So... Physicalized inventory, hey? Or inventory, I guess, would be it. Uh, I'm not sure where it is in here. Oh, no, that was inside Star Citizen, I was thinking. Hmm. Anyway. Um... Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'm not entirely sure when it's coming. I don't think he mentioned exactly when they were looking at putting this out. Um, more like that they were that it, that it is uh, coming, and I would imagine since they're talking about it in uh, in calling all devs at this point that it's not too far away um, to start seeing these changes. Uh, it does sound like there are a few waves of changes they will be making. Because they do have a lot of different pieces of this. The local inventories, the... Um, the uh, Oh, there's another piece that they're talking about. Having a, a um, an asset app, basically, in the Moby Glass that gives you an overview of all the stuff you own everywhere. Uh, which is really important because you're going to ha eventually have, like, a ton of stuff over several star systems. Um you need to know where your things are. <laughs> there was some good information as well that uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, corpse running in Star Citizen. Um, so if you have a whole bunch of stuff, really valuable stuff on your body, and you die die at the bottom of some cave on some godforsaken world, you will have to go. I mean, you should have to, and that's the way this game would obviously work, but. They confirmed you will have to go back to your corpse and pick up your stuff. I mean, I would imagine it's 
the physical inventory and things like that might be tied in with some sort of trade update because it is going to really change the way that trade and mercantilism mm -hmm. works in game. Absolutely. Because, I mean, I would imagine the sh the shops sh sh the shops surely would have their own physicalized inventory. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it wouldn't. Don't call me Shirley. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Lee? Sorry. <laughs> um yeah it, it will that's the thing with inventory it touches a lot of pieces of the game right hmm. it's uh hmm. it's kind of part of everything um they did also talk about how you will like there's a few things you're gonna have to take into consideration because this is um this is uh i'm not sure if they're gonna have your actual corpse or just a pile of gear there that is a that is an interesting question because it does raise some uh some uh interesting would it be thoughts your about actual would it be your actual corpse though because yeah. don't you if if you die you become someone else in the family or something like that well it'll it'll definitely tie into the your way that they've corpse yeah, it'll tie into the way that they've decided at the end of the day to make uh, Death of a Spaceman work. Um, <clears throat> however, that is I they're I'm trying to remember the details, but they've recently had a big uh, discussion about Death of a Spaceman, and um, but yeah, so I'm not sure if it'll be your corpse or just a pile of gear on the ground, but you will have to run back to where it was dropped. <laughs> you aren't you. Oh man. Um. Oh, one of the things they thought I thought was kind of interesting. So, one of the things he was mentioning is like, okay, so you have a backpack on your back. If you like volume and weight will matter. So, he was talking about like a pool cue or a snooker cue. Um, you can't fit that in a backpack. It doesn't fit in a backpack. If you put it through a wood chipper you can certainly put the chips from the wood in the backpack but it doesn't it, you know the <laughs> pool cue doesn't fit in the back can't unbake the cake after you baked it exactly um so there's a lot of things to take into consideration with physicalized inventory it has to physically fit in the container um so it's gonna be i <laughs> they're gonna have a lot of fun in those gameplay programmers i'm sure um and I think a lot of those types of like large, large and difficult to move objects you're going to have to carry in your hands, I think, or you're going to have to run, uh, drive around on a trolley, <laughs> bring it in full circle. <laughs> oh man! Now, I want to know from you, Shiver, on a scale of one to ten, how many time, how, how many multiples? Will shenanigans, shenanigans increase in the game when uh, there are uh, trolleys and carts where you can push around other players? <laughs> I think it's going to start at a multiple factor of six and then steady out to maybe three. Okay. So it's a permanent times, times three in, in, increase in shenanigans. Got it. Yes. Would you six would you... because new shenanigans to try, and then it, it levels out at three because these are the shenanigans that stuck. Yeah, <laughs> totally. These I, are I don't the think shenanigans. It can't be long until we have a Daymar rally involving trolleys, as they talked about on the on the show. I mean, really, where you have to like actually pu push one of your buddies. Now I know that mass, volume, weight, etc., are all going to affect things, but. How, as if if at all, do you think CIG will address running speeds for characters, the base running speed for characters? Because we don't all run the same speed. Some of us waddle. Thank you. So, is that going to be a factor in things? And if so, what is, is that? Oh, am I thinking way too much into it? Because I, I this definitely... has got serious impact on gameplay. Because if you are being chased. 
unarmed on a planet and your top speeds are exactly the same. It's just a matter of, did you manage to get away first? In which case, it's a bit shit. Honestly, absolutely. I think that, that running speed will be affected by, and they've talked about it before, uh, your armor has a huge effect. So if you're wearing heavy armor, you move slower. Um, and I also think if you're carrying something, if you're carrying something that's so heavy you can barely move, I think you're... And they, I mean, they already have variable walking and running speeds in the game. You get the like the the mouse wheel control of how fast you're walking. Um, I I think it's pretty easy for them to just say, yeah, this is now your max walking speed, you know, based on the well, weight. I mean, what about the base walking speed though? No, no external facts or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Will that change from different characters? Will they be assigned a random? running speed at character creation or do you think they'll do something really fucking stupid and tight to leg length or something like that in which case everyone's just going to be as tall as they can be thing is well there won't be there won't be different heights for characters in star citizen though so sure. because they looked at having to design different cockpits for every different height and they decided they didn't want to do it <laughs> um there are some parts of star citizen where they 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 took a look at the immersion and just went no (laughs) um we could put a chair on the rails no no. i don't i think base running speed for all characters will probably be the same that's my guess and then it will be modified by environmental factors by staggering by weight by tons of other things but oh and by injuries of course um you'll probably also be able to get cybernetic legs which make you run faster almost certainly come on what is it lieutenant dan you got new legs (laughs) oh dear Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what I, that, that's my feeling. I think that, I think at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to run the same speed, but then injuries will take a toll on some players. Some players will get prosthetics and so on and so forth. Maybe you'll be able to take, dr- take drugs system. that make you run faster. <laughs> yeah, I suppose the stamina system is going to be a factor in yeah. on foot chases as well, because uh, if you have, eaten better or something like that maybe your stamina stats stamina decreases slower or something yeah for sure um i do also think that oh if well, you, look. I, I also think that if you have your helmet off the oxygen content of whatever atmosphere you're breathing will have an effect because they already track the o2 for your player um and that ties into stamina directly so True. um I think there's going to be a lot of things. They're really, um, you know, Jake talks about this a lot with, with Breath of the Wild. And what makes a really great game is when they have system level gameplay where things just work because that's how they've designed the game world to work. So, like, you can light this on fire because these things can be lit on, like, like all grass can be lit on fire. And you can make it do these things because there is wind, you know, like. Yes, it becomes this giant grass fire because there's wind and there's grass. So why wouldn't you have a, gra- a huge grass fire? <laughs> and we've already seen that with the freaking with their fire demos in the ships, right? Where it spreads all throughout the ship, mm. and anything that's flammable, <laughs> you know, goes up. And it turns out the origin ships are a fire hazard. Apparently, apparently, keep lighting eight ninety jumps on fire. I'm not sure what they have against them, but but uh, it's quite violent. I'm sure all the owners are quite offended. All right. Um, does anyone have any more questions? I'm very curious. Um, do we have anyone chatting on oh, YouTube? And it turns out the origin ships are... A f- Whoops. Sorry about that, folks. Got a bit of a uh, echo there. All right. So... Mm-hmm. Just gonna switch over to another one of our uh, videos here. This one's been running in the loop for a while now. It is um, a nice video, though. 
It is a nice video. Um, one of the things... <laughs> Actually, back to this video here. I was really impressed. With, uh, you know, some of these areas of the game you don't see very often. And then I was watching things fly over in Arcorp there. And I was like, man, that looks really good. Because <laughs> I haven't actually been to Arcorp in a bit. Also, this bit here with the, uh, like, dirt coming out of the tube and falling down. This looks great. Anyway. Um... Yeah, it's come. It's coming along. <laughs> I I did like that uh, that theaters of war got an actual call out this week. Um, it's nice to be reminded that it's a thing. <laughs> Hope we get to see it soon. Um, but uh, I do understand their hesitance to actually put it out into the wild because uh, it has this sort of. I think I think theaters of war has the potential to be like the thing that starts to put Star Citizen on the map as an actual released product because they could potentially have like a free fly type thing and have be able to invite everybody into this, you know, uh, battlefield style game mini like mini game of Star Citizen, or it could end up just being another sort of buggy mess like Star Marine is, you know. I mean, it's also got. A built-in problem of, let's say, this of war releases with just uh, one or two different variations, literally one or two different maps for the sake of a better word. It's one of the things that people always want is more play area, more different player, because it will only last X amount of time apart from the people who just really, really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And those generally are the minority. So it, it, it might, it could backfire, and they end up saying, "Oh shit!" So we've got to release more stuff for this, but we could be concentrating on this. No, it is true. But I suppose they. True. Sorry, go. On. No, no, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm just agreeing with you. I suppose they could be clever about it and just, you know, use bits that they've built for the PU, take them out as a section, and say here, you know, and then that way, not only does it test out. Um, combat mechanics as well but it tests out map creation how this area is done and what they can learn from that so as, yeah it needn't be a complete waste if they do end up supporting it indirectly like that yeah it's just interesting because richard terror was actually talking i think it was richard terror somebody was mentioning it as a separate game the way that he mentioned the key was talking about how making content for star citizen squadron 42 and theaters of war and it was kind of an interesting call out but i think it i don't think it's a terrible idea shiver you know maybe no. it's a little too early for it to be a released product but having a battlefield style like smaller gameplay experience as part of the star citizen like overarching brand it's not a terrible idea <laughs> Mm. Um, but you have to support it. You're right. Then that's that's sort of a uh, you got to keep an eye on. That. <laughs> so you don't think uh, Richard Tyre was inflating the situation then? Come on, the car, get a grip. That one fall a bit flat. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> you think that's how he got his name? That that his that like his last name. His family made tires. <laughs> Could be. Oh. Better than that, Joey Dunlop down the road. <laughs> I saw this picture the other day oh, no. of um. Porsche 911 tires, I think. And, you know, one of them was fucking huge and the other one was really thin. It was to show the difference between 30 years of manufacturing. I sent the picture to my friend and I said, look, look, inflation. <laughs> she hasn't talked to me since. <laughs> but it was fucking oh, worth it. Oh, can't blame her. All right. Um, <laughs> I so... do it again. Would you? Yeah, you would. 
I didn't even have to think about it that long. It's like, yeah, okay. One thing I want to call out here, I, I don't know. It's, I look at this game for so long, even then still some of the things, I'm like, this is kind of awesome. The the helmet, that, that helmet, the, like, skull helmet with the horns, in, that's just so awesome. They have a lot of great armor in Star Citizen. Mm-hmm. Do you like the way the faces are lit up from inside? I was just looking at I'm not sure I do, to be honest with you. It makes the face look like it's sort of placed in there rather than it actually being there, which actually, which the weird thing is, it actually is in there because of the way they've done the character models. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, they're they're, they're purposefully like they're purposefully highlighting the face because they want you to be able to see your character, <laughs> right? Mm. Um, but. It's more of a thing. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's something they do in movies a lot, but it's not really something that exists in real world. You don't have a bunch of lights inside your helmet shining in your eyes. That's not, that's not helpful. <laughs> um, I'm blind. But uh, it does, it's an interesting look. I, um, I was kind of curious. Oh, man. Okay, for people who've been around Star Citizen for a long time, Actually, watching this character manipulate the, these these trolleys and seeing their hips like shift properly to adjust to the movement and everything—it looks so much better than it used to look. <laughs> where the ships, where the where the ships, where the characters would look so stiff and you know, mm. walking motions were not quite right. They're so much better now; it's amazing. Um, is that why we have the ladders? Is so we can put floating bits of text in the sky in game yes that's what you that's um, going to be your, oh. your 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 task you, they'll be like hey here's your quest we need you to mark um art corp and you're just going to like walk up this ladder into thin air and just put letters up i always wondered how they did that yeah that's one of the things i wondered in star wars as well is when they're navigating in space how do they avoid those giant floating walls of text <laughs> right um it'd be it'd be kind of terrifying you're flying through space and all of a sudden you there's just these huge letter shaped blocks flying at you it'd be right. awful worse than an asteroid feel actually anyway i think these people are probably tired of our shenanigans at this point so um i say we work on wrapping this up thank you everybody for watching our uh our shenanigans our own personal shenanigans <laughs> They started at a factor of six and leveled out at three. They did, yeah. As always. The puns really spiked at the end there, though. <laughs> um. So, Shiver, where can we find you? What do you do besides this? And um, uh, advertise some stuff. Uh, Wednesday, we're continuing our playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Victorian Age, which has been really quite fun. Ooh, uh, nice. That's 23.30 UTC. I think next week or the week after that, we've got another Star Trek game coming on a Sunday. Yes. Yes. Because this is Saturday for you normal people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check us out over on twitch.tv slash table of horrors. Yes, absolutely do that. Um, for me, I should, there's a couple things I should talk about. First of all, um, I'm usually on the Unnamed Game Show, which is our show about general gaming. Uh, we tend not to talk about Star Citizen unless it's relevant to a topic we are bringing up. Um, and uh, that runs Tuesdays at this exact same time, showtime. Um, so it's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Mountain, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. And um, yeah, Tuesdays. Come join us. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. Um, obviously, with in an, a much larger number of games to talk about, we uh, we tend to run pretty long with that show at some times. We intended when we started that show for it to be 60 minutes. We've had, like, no no shows that are 60 minutes. It never happens. Cannot fit it in. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, and I also wanted to bring up a few other things. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of stuff happening in real space. 
um, which, as many of you know, I do talk about and cover, um, including on here. Um, we obviously had the uh, Mars Perseverance rover and uh, Ingenuity helicopter land on Mars successfully. And um, my focus is now shifting to it looks like very much we, or ver looks very much like we are going to have a uh, Starship flight here in the next couple days. Um, Starship uh, serial number 10 for SpaceX. Um, appears as though it will be launching on probably Monday. And, uh, I mean, Monday is certainly not guaranteed, but it should be, um, should be early in the week if all goes well and if the weather cooperates and all that good stuff. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to land this one. They recently redid the landing pad and, uh, and painted an actual star, uh, SpaceX logo in the middle this time to see if they maybe can hit the bullseye without uh, hitting it, you know, really, really hard and exploding. Anyway. SpaceX marks the spot. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, do you ever live stream the hops? Asks Hell Look. Uh, I haven't done one yet. Mostly it's just because I'm at work when they happen. <laughs> that's been our, my issue a lot of times they're in the middle of the day and i'm i'm in my office at work i will absolutely live stream a starship flight if um if it happens when i'm available uh, a lot of times i'm end up you know surreptitiously watching it at my desk at work it's not quite <laughs> quite uh live streaming uh capable but i absolutely will cover one if uh if i can um, on the plus side, there is a, uh, there's a lot of other good coverage. Um, Everyday Astronaut covers them. Uh, NASASpaceflight.com covers them, and SpaceX has been streaming their own live stream or their own flights as well. Um, recently, uh, for Starship, and um, but uh, if I'm not around, absolutely catch on one of those sources. You'll see links in our relay Discord in the Space Race channel. Um, I don't know if Everyday Astronaut watches me. I may have exchanged a few tweets with him over the years or talked to him on Discord briefly, but uh, that's about it. I would be very surprised if he watches me, but I would make me happy, though. Anyway, uh, that's what it for Could us. Could you describe today. that as a stellar situation? No. Oh. Actually, on another tiny piece of news, uh, there is a launch tomorrow, um, a Starlink launch. This is uh, yet, yet another Starlink launch is probably a good way to put it. Um, they now have like 1,100 satellites in orbit. So uh, another 60 going up uh, tomorrow. Um, stay tuned to our um, Discord channel, the Space Race channel there. Um for, are they, hang on, hang on, hang on. Are they launching 60 satellites at a time on one thing? Yeah, every every launch is 60 satellites. How big or small are these satellites, then? That's a very good question. Thank you, Shiver. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the uh, SpaceX... They knew, they knew they needed to launch thousands of satellites, so what they did was they uh, they flat pack them. So they created satellites that, are, um, that can be flat packed. They're basically like a like a basically a long flat shape. They are three meters long and one meter wide, and they weigh about two hundred and sixty kilograms. Jeez, um, such small. And they can fit sixty of them inside the fairing of a Falcon Nine, and they just huh. flat pack them. So there's just big stacks, thirty on each side inside the fairing. And then they they couldn't fit in me. <laughs> They couldn't fit in a, a deployment mechanism, so the way they deploy is that they, when they're ready to deploy them, they release the like tension rods that are holding the satellites in, in, and then they just spin the second stage so that they just like, like spin out like a deck of cards being flung out, and uh, that's yeah. cool. It's really cool, and uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, check that out tomorrow. I'm I might try and stream that. Um, and I think it's at about, it's at a pretty reasonable time. I think it's like 8 
forty something um, Eastern time. Do a quick check here. Here's a good website for you if you're ever looking for a schedule of rocket launches, by the way. Rocketlaunch.live. Um, tomorrow at 8.37 p.m. Eastern Time, Falcon 9 is launching. So, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I think that's it for us this uh, this show. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we had a good time. I hope we had a good time. Did you have a good time, Trevor? It was all right. He had a good time. Anyway, thank you, everybody.